I've got bad news and I've got good news about the outcome of the Hong Kong disturbances. The bad news first, democracy, as hoped for, is now unlikely to come to Hong Kong no matter how many trains are burned or shops smashed. The good news is that the authorities are unlikely to want to mess with Hong Kong for a long time to come. China wants, above all, a calm and prosperous Hong Kong, or the army would be here already. It would be if a series of chief executives had not poked their big sticks into the hornet's nest. These sticks have consistently failed. Current chief executive Carrie Lam has fiddled while Hong Kong has burned, and sadly the government's use of the carrot, rather than the stick, remains untried. Beijing wants Hong Kong to keep calm and carry on. Did you get that? Keep calm and carry on. Hong Kongers do not realize how important our city is to the Chinese economy. China needs to maintain Hong Kong's freedoms because Beijing does not want to open its own borders to the free movement of capital. The response of Beijing to the demonstrations has shown that those freedoms will not be easily changed. Hong Kong needs more than a resolution of current domestic issues. It also needs a permanent political solution to safeguard the city's future. That means clarity about our future status, not when one country, two systems is over in 2047, but today. Our domestic problems reflect decades of government stubbornness and complacency, and that stood in the way of removing entrenched vested interests. Doing nothing is not an option, but it seems that it is the only option left to the Lam administration. The permanent solution for Hong Kong requires mainland interference that goes beyond lending a few undercover police officers. One route is from the mainland to appoint a governor of Hong Kong, someone who gets paid by Beijing with a five-year term to maintain the SAR's stability, growth and prosperity. The one country, two systems policy has been strikingly successful, so there's no need to change anything else. The existing Hong Kong administrative structure would remain local. The legislative and executive council stay, but the self-congratulatory patronage of the ministerial system and the vested interests should go. Hey, why not? The governor system worked pretty well during 156 years of colonial rule. Some will point out that Hong Kong's mini constitution, the basic law, forbids this. But you know, China could work with the UK to change the agreement they made together to create the basic law. Desperate Britain would agree to anything for a trade deal. China would sacrifice a little face, but it would secure a political solution that nobody could argue with. The outcome is sustainable peace, needed change, and an improvement in the lives of Hong Kong people without too much in the way of change. Oh, and it keeps China's economy humming too. It's a win-win.